should try. Furthermore, Ananda, there are people who do not rely on proper enlightenment to cultivate samadhi, but cultivate in some special way that is based on their false thinking, holding to the idea of perpetuating their physical bodies. They roam in the mountains and forests in places people do not go and become ten kinds of immortals. Commentary. Furthermore, Ananda, there are people who do not rely on proper enlightenment to cultivate samadhi. They do not rely on the great enlightened way of body. They do not rely on the great suragama samadhi, and they do not cultivate the skill of turning back their hearing to hear the self nature. What they cultivate is a devant samadhi of the externalist paths. It is. Based on false thinking and on the, the urge to climb on conditions to take advantage of situations, they think like this: I'll cultivate now, and when I accomplish some karma in the way, I display my spiritual penetrations for everyone to see, and get them to believe in me, respect me, make obeisance to me, and make offerings to me. That's what's meant by taking advantage of situations. It's not for the sake of becoming a Buddha, or for the sake of practicing and upholding the Buddha Dharma and causing it to spread and grow that they cultivate. They develop their skill with the idea of getting offerings for themselves. They display both greed and stupidity in that way, so they cultivate in some special way that is based on their false thinking. What do they have in mind? Holding to the idea of perpetuating their physical bodies, they roam in the mountains and forests in places people do not go, and become ten kinds of immortals. They have the false thought that they will make their bodies strong and enduring, that they will become as solid as rock, that their bodies will never go bad. They go deep into the mountains or perhaps find an isolated island. Sutra and Ananda, some living beings with an unflagging resolution, make themselves strong with the doses of medicine. When they have perfected this method of ingestion, they are known as earth traveling immortals. Commentary: Ananda, some living beings with an unflagging resolution, make themselves strong with the doses of medicine. They take this medicine with the one aim in mind to become an immortal. And flagging resolution means that they are inconsistent in their practice. All the people to be discussed in this section are extremely faithful when it comes to their practice. It's not that they do it today and neglect it tomorrow. Every day, day after day, they develop their. Particular, their particular kind of skill. In this case, is ingesting drugs. By this, they hope to gain immortality so that they don't have to die. When they have perfected this method of ingestion, they are known as earth traveling immortals. The result of their effort is that they are very light when they walk. Their bodies are buoyant. They can run very swiftly over the ground. They get to higher speeds than the emu in Australia, which can run as much as forty miles an hour. This emoto travels over the ground as if he were flying. That's how he gets his name. So try some of these beings with unflagging resolution make themselves strong through the use of. Grasses and herbs. They have perfected when they have perfected this method of taking herbs. They are known as flying immortals. Commentary: Some of these beings with unflagging resolution make themselves strong through the the use the use of grasses and herbs. They pursue this practice with firm determination. If someone were to tell them to discontinue it, they could not do it. Their minds are like rock or iron. They are tougher 
the nails when it comes to perfecting their method of practice. In this case, it is the use of grasses and herbs. They can call to appeal out of certain herbs and trees. They eat it every single day without fail, and due to their determination and to their wish to succeed, the method eventually starts to work. When they have perfected this method of taking herbs, they are known as flying immortals. Their bodies are as light as a wisp of smoke, and they can mount the clouds and drive the fog. Sutra, some of these beings with unflagging resolution make themselves strong through the use of metal and stone. When they have perfected this method of transformation, they are known as Rami Immortals. Commentary, some of these beings with unflagging resolution make themselves strong through the use of metal and stone. Their minds are determined, extremely strong and steadfast. They make a stove for concocting pills. They mix mercury and lead together, heating and reheating it, smelting and re-smelting it. They may smelt it for 49 days or for 21 days. It depends on the prescription they are taught. They combine gold and silver and then these two are sufficiently smelted. They put all the ingredients together and eat the results. They called pills of they are called pills of immortality. It's a wonderful medicine. If one takes a pill of immortality, one can cast off the womb and transform one's bones. This is just a brief mention of the secret prescriptions for forging immortality. If they are successful, when they have perfected this method of transformation, they are known as Ramin Immortals. Method of transformation refers to the changes that take place as a result of the pills they concoct. The pills have a special ability to create change. As Ramin Immortals, they can go everywhere they want. Sutra, some of these beings with unflagging resolution make themselves strong through movement and cessation. When they have perfected their breath and essence, they are known as space traveling immortals. Commentary Some of these beings with unflagging resolution make themselves strong through movement and cessation. These beings work with determination on movement and cessation. Movement can refer to the time that they work on developing their skill. Cessation then is when they stop working. Movement can also refer to exercise such as Tai Chi Chuan. Cessation then is when they cultivate stillness. That is, they sit there and melt the, the essence until it transforms into energy. They smelt the energy until it transforms into spirit, and they smelt the spirit until it returns to emptiness. How do they smelt the essence into energy? They sit in meditation and do not allow the essence to escape. They don't go near women. When their essence doesn't escape, it reverts inward. In that way, it turns into energy in Suprana. This energy becomes fused throughout the body. They manage to do it by concentrating their thoughts on it just the way the chicken hatches an egg. They think about how their essence is being transformed into energy, how the energy is pervading their body, and then how it is being transformed into spirit. Then they smelt the spirit until it returns to emptiness, until it becomes like emptiness itself. Then they then smelt the emptiness until it returns to nothing. They go to the point that there's nothing at all. At that point, they feel very free and at ease. They can go out esoterically and enter the female. That's the way the Taoists phrase it. That means they can go out from the top of their heads. The Taoists in China practice the, exactly the methods that Shakyuni Buddha describes here. They have a book called Wu Shang. 
Yong Huang Xinyin Miao Qin. They consider this book a real treasure. It tells how to smelt the essence to transform it into energy, smelt the energy to transform it into spirit, smelt the spirit to transform it into emptiness, and smelt the emptiness to transform it into nothing. These immortals can walk around in space. They can go out from the top of their heads. There are a lot of strange and esoteric things in this world. There's another Taoist book for sale called Wa Nia Xian Tsum. In it, there are pictures of a man sending a small person out of the top of his head, and that small person sending out another small person, and so forth until there are lots of small people. That's supposed to be millions of transformation bodies. But I tell you, making millions of transformation bodies is not as much trouble as all that. These Taoist books are just totally involved in attachment to appearances. Making transformation bodies can be done at will. There's no fixed formula for creating them. When they have perfected their breath and essence, they are known as space traveling immortals. Sutra: Some beings with unflagging resolution make themselves strong by using the flow of saliva. When they have perfected the virtues of this moisture, they are known as heaven-traveling immortals. Commentary: The previous immortal could roam in space. This one could go up to the heavens. Some beings with unflagging resolution make themselves strong by using the flow of saliva. When the tongue is placed on the roof of the mouth, the saliva flows down. From above, adherents of external、uh, list paths call this sweet dew, heavenly drinking water, and a lot of other names. The process is complete when the saliva flows down and is swallowed into the stomach. Taoists call this the, the elixir of immortality. They have the, the saying: If you want to live forever. And not grow old, you must return the essence to nurture the grain. They contemplate having their essence form a cluster on top of their heads. In this way, they strengthen their brains. These particular immortals continually swallow the saliva and internalize the breath. The breath in a regular scheduled practice. When they have perfected the virtues of this moisture, they are known as heaven-traveling immortals. Eventually, their faces take on a glow. Also, they are very old. Their faces are like children's. They are red-cheeked and fresh, like a young boy's. These are the heaven-traveling immortals. Sutra: Some beings with unflagging resolution make themselves strong with the essence of sun and moon. When they have perfected the inhalation of this purity, they are known as immortals of penetrating conduct. Commentary: Some beings with unflagging resolution make themselves strong with the essence of sun and moon. Their minds are firm and resolved. These immortals make a practice of breathing. In the essence of the sun and the secretions of the moon, they convert the sunlight and moonlight. When they have perfected the inhalation of this purity, they are known as immortals of penetrating conduct. They can travel to the heavens or anywhere else they want to go. How do they go about this practice? For example, in the morning they face the sun and make three hundred and sixty inhalations. In the evening, they face the moon and make three hundred and sixty inhalations. They put all their time into smelting their stinking skin bags. That's what our bodies are: stinking skin bags. The venerable Master Su Yun wrote a song of a skin bag in expression of this fact. But this type of, im- of immortal puts all his energy into developing this kind of skill. They don't know that they should put that effort into developing the self nature. So the difference between Taoism and Buddhism is that the former uses effort on what is apparent, and the latter uses effort 
on what is not apparent. So one has an attachment, and the other doesn't. That's the difference. Actually, the way of the immortals and the Buddhist way are similar. The point is that one is involved in attachments and the other is not. The kind of skill these immortals develop is basically all right, but they get attached to it. They become totally engrossed in appearances because of that they have a hindrance. They feel they have to do things in a certain way because they have things at hand up. They cannot get completely out of the cycle of rebirth. They don't gain ultimate understanding and release. These are called immortals with penetrating conduct. The first of five immortals described previously were said to have one sort of travel or another because they are basically bound to the earth and cannot run in the higher realms. The later five now being described are said to have one kind of conduct or another because they are more advanced and can run in the higher regions.